Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia. Welcome back to another episode of our Legendary Sunset campaign. This is episode 7. We pick it up from turn 36 in the harvest season of 201. So we ended our last episode with two weddings. Uh, we have Da Chiao and Xiao Chiao finally joining us in the harvest season of 201. Uh, it's not very early, but at least we got them. And uh, Da Chiao is beautiful, loyal, and creative. Daughter of the Southlands. 15% trade influence bonus. Uh, she can be our second female uh, commander uh, that can help out with the mission. So she can actually leave us. Uh, we kept her for that position, but she didn't really gain that much level. And we can save some money here by just kicking her out of the clan. Uh, we're gonna. She's not really historically relevant. She's one of these randomly generated generals we got uh, after taking a commandery. So off she goes. And we still need two female sentinels, but I figure we can wait uh, to see if we get more relevant ones. And uh, it's easy to grab a couple from the candidates pool. Guo Tu being in our pool is actually quite interesting because Guo Tu has a really good bonus. Uh, he has 10% campaign movement range. So down the line, he could be quite useful. We could grab him for now. He does have interesting traits. Interesting is not so great traits. Um, he's young. I don't know. Maybe we don't need it. We have so much movement because we already counteracted our reckless luck issue. Uh, we're actually gaining exactly 10 per turn plus whatever amount of mission we do. So 15 because we finished a mission. Uh, but really we are pretty well set up here. 40% uh, campaign movement range constantly. 15% retinue upkeep discount constantly and always there's increase in military supply so that's not really something we have to worry about so Da Chiao and Xiao Chiao will be jumping into armies they, they are good at buffing the army uh, they're probably good as just generals that follow a certain army kind of like what Zhou Tai is doing right now just to give the whole army plus 10 morale and also immune to terror is really good too um, so because of that battlefield role, I think we're probably just going to give her, I don't know, any of these are fine. I don't know if we're going to send her out right away. It's probably just a lot of, yeah, let's still get the main leadership abilities in case we need to make her heir for whatever reason. Wait a second. She has mending. That is very good. Okay. I kind of regret we gave her this. I assume she had a very regular tree. So we should... I mean, this is still useful. 20% range block chance for melee cab is really good. Um, I guess we want to go zeal next. Perception into mending. And then she can just follow Sun Tzu around and just... Or whoever around and just give that buff. I mean, Sun Tzu makes sense because that, that's a family buff right there too. So I'll tell here, let's see, Wisdom the River. Okay, so she has more standard skills. Uh, obviously, Wisdom the River is pretty nice. Uh, flaming Shot would be really nice. Yeah, she has a very good tree. Kind-hearted, beautiful, loyal. I mean, historically, she gets more shine because Zhou Yu lives a little longer. Uh, so there's a lot of pop culture references to her. During Battle of Tribi, they like to play up her character. Uh, even though historically she's just as irrelevant as Da Chiao. And Da Chiao actually historically had a really bad life because you gotta think about it. She married Sun Tzu and then about three months later he dies. So she's gonna be a widow the rest of her life because you know imagine you're the concubine of the former uh, leader of a faction. They're not gonna let you remarry so you're gonna be stuck being a widow in the household and without status because you're the concubine and she clearly I don't think she you know gave him a kid during that three month so uh, at least there's no record of it so I bet her status in the family is actually quite low uh, so not great of a not a very good life for her historically but overall uh, interesting character in pop culture all right we did get ourselves a armor craftsman at the end uh, used it as a save point and then we're going to move on to recapturing uh, our homestead, not really our ancestry homest uh, homeland, our ancestry homelands from over here, it's just that Sun Jian had a position here in Changsha before he went north for the coalition, a journey that he never returned. Uh, it's kind of like those king of the north go south and never return. He's like the, he's not, he wasn't the king of the south, but we can assume he was. 
Um, I also made a few decisions uh, in between episodes here. I figured we're actually going to get rid of some of our tax collection. Uh, we didn't really invest heavily into that uh, reform line, and we're not going to. And we're rather going to keep most of our peasantry commander like this just food focused and not really going to invest heavily in terms of income. And we're going to start preparing these commanderies for um, corruption reduction. So we're actually going to demolish this uh, and pop in a state workshop. And for the final slot, once we upgrade, we're going to pop in a conscription building to help with our uh, seasonal deployment because we have so many characters that we want to be on the field. Uh, but we can't because we have a very limited amount of seasonal deployment. And Taishitz is going to be put into this army. I feel like it's a little better. Um, Lijue is just here for no reason. <laughs> I, he's here because he's too bored on the bench and he needs a couple levels to give us share expertise. Uh, Zhang Liao would have fit nicely because they're both former uh, officers under Dong Zhuo. But uh, Taishitz just, just has Hail of Arrow, which is going to be very useful in a secondary army that's not going to have any men right now. Uh, as he attacked north, and historically he was responsible for helping out with the attack on Hulefei, which would be in this region. So that fits. Um, and John, I will go into a more passive role, just staying at home, farming yellow turbans wherever we have uh, them. We're probably not going to have them in many places. I'm going to focus on developing Changsha, uh, Poyang, Jianye, and eventually Nanhai, but that's down the line. I figure we don't have that many administrators overall so we're not going to focus uh, to pump out income in most of our commanderies most of them we're going to actually go uh, and make them more passive uh don't all potentially could go tall in the future because it does have a harbor and all the harbor commanderies have a special place uh, for our faction so same situation here we're actually going to get rid of the tax collection building uh, just so that we don't have any rebellion issues and since corruption is creeping up as we are upgrading we're actually going to start focusing on getting state workshops uh, popping out in all our commanderies that's not income focus so here we'll actually go build that up um, yeah we need building slots in all these places all right, here we're actually going to go income focus. This is, serves a different purpose. This serves the purpose of giving a cost discount to all purple buildings. Uh, so that's why they're here. Let's pop that out. I think Datel and Datel is not going to make a showing on the battlefield for a while. So we're probably going to have them on assignment duty uh, for a little bit. Peasantry. They can only do two things. Okay. I mean, if that's the case... Our biggest peasantry commander is one one seventy here, Yu Zhang. Uh, two twenty three in Kuai Ji, two seventy five. So Jian An and Kuai Ji basically. And our best commerce town is three twenty, but someone's working here. It's the one where we have a harbor. Well, 40, that's all we have. I mean, eventually we can, once we capture Changsha, that would be a very good commerce town with the tea and the trade port. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Xingdu has 340. But someone might be already working here. Oh, no, no, no. No one's working here. So she can actually come here. This is actually a better place for her. And then we'll save Xiao Qiao for Changsha a bit later and keep assignment open for now. Okay. So that's fine. And I think we have all the buildings built. So now we can pump all our money into a sizable force to take them on. Um, our goal is to just wipe them out and declare war this turn. Or we can wait for more money and just go for a finished build of Onyx Dragons. Not sure what's the best approach. They're not exactly healing because they're on march. We can definitely take them. We can also take... Mm, yeah, I feel like we can actually take the fishing port this turn. If we do it right. Or maybe we wait a turn. 
All right, we're going to move them into position here. Oh, they're so low health. Okay, so a quick heal. And they can attack, they can reinforce, and we'll be able to take the town down next turn. Over here, the question is how big of an army we can afford right here. So clearly the only options we have if you want to attack this turn is mercenary uh, infantry and for him mercenary archers. We can't recruit mercenary archers on him because Zhang Hong is not level 3 yet. Do we want... Uh, we can do something like this. We can give him the mercenary... All right, let's just pump it out. We'll fight this turn. We'll give both of them our army. Might be overkill. He will eventually get tiger guards. We won't give him a retinue just yet. And he will eventually get onyx dragons because we want high base damage. 48 versus 40. So this will enjoy the multiplier from their bonus a bit more. Hmm. Alright, we'll temporarily recruit a few of these. And just use them for this turn. I'm trying to figure out how we can... Oh, we gotta declare war first. It's about time, my friend. Everyone loves us when we do this. Alright. So we would like these guys to reinforce this fight, but we also want to move towards there. So it's a balancing act with our movement points. Alright, we still have enough. Alright, we'll fight. Ah, eh, we don't need to actually fight this one. We'll save a little time because these are all temporary units that we might just disband after this turn so they can take cat. Ooh, but then we have a battle at the fishing port. So actually we'll fight this, try to keep it clean. Uh, use a lot of hail of arrows. Yeah, that's the idea here. Let's go. Alrighty, uh, we're loaded up in here. Our other generals are coming. We don't actually need them. Uh, none of them are very helpful for us in this fight. Uh, we're just basically gonna wait for them to come towards us. Uh, maybe actually use more of this lake to our advantage. They do have quite a bit of cavalry. This way we can slow them down. Uh, obviously, Hell of Arrow is very important here. And I'm pretty sure we want these like right here. Yeah, that sounds pretty good to me. Alright, start. They're actually willing to duel, but I'm not actually interested. If Luo Jun can duel them, it's fine. Uh, these two will just chill at the corner of the map where they pop up, because once they're on the field, this buff should activate. Missile attack if possible. Can target if missile... Oh, we might need to move them. Let's see. Enable if friendly units are in range in this ability. Friendly units in range of this ability. Missile attack possible. Did they change this? Hmm. Because I don't think it's activating. I'll check this out after we exit the battle. Are they actually moving towards us? I'm not sure. But we can definitely get a few duels. Um, Zhao Rei and Kang Qin Meng. I'd rather pull them away from where they're going. Surprisingly, they're coming towards us even though we are attacking and we also don't have siege weapons. 
Let's move into range first. Who do we want to fight? Oh, not... Oh, Yao doesn't want to duel, even though he has the best equipment for dueling. Wonder if he will... He will just challenge us. Okay. Pull it closer to our side, obviously. Oh, dear God. We made them walk through this. Uh, so much for that defense. It's not actually activating. This is not how it's supposed to work. They, they described it as the two Johns are on the field at the same time. They boost all friendly units on the map. But that's not the case, which is interesting. Someone commented a couple episodes ago about you just need to give them a bow, which seems to be true now because it can target if missile attack is possible, which means they need to have a bow equipped. And it doesn't say anything here on the ability about friendly yeah but it says friendly unit in range with this ability it means they have to be both have this ability but the first condition is missile attack possible so we might have to give one of them a bow are they still they're still walking forward they're just slugging through the terrain so that's our opportunity to actually go and uh shoot a couple of hail of arrows at them A little concerned about the cavalry coming at us. Mm, yeah, very concerned now. We have 109 speed, they have 119 speed, so they can catch us if they want us, if they want to catch us. And if we really need to get out, we can duel her. I want to get to this side and get like a health arrow down like that. Uh, yeah, we'll just let them fight. I'm confident with our gold armor, silver gear, we can beat them. Come on, come on. This is our chance. Uh, they're gonna break, they're gonna come over here. Right, we'll beat them down first then. Mm, it's not how we intended this to go. Can we break through like this and just let them charge the other way? Oh, I think we we got an opening maybe. If we can fire fast enough without being disrupted. Uh, so much for not being disrupted. Alright, screw it. We'll fight a duel just to get the cavalry off of us. Alright, they're winning. The cavalry's coming from our right flank. I think we can win this. We have pretty decent stats. Especially compared to her. I'm going to send Li Jue and uh, Luo Jun together to go rescue our guy after the duel. Yeah, we already have a health advantage. We want to win slowly, uh, but we can wa let watch them go up faster. Okay, if they send one cavalry under the tower, we have a pretty great advantage here. There we go. I mean, come come one at a time, please. Okay, now we have an opening to shoot our health arrow. Our tower's doing work. Get back on your horse. Are you tired already? No, he's really slow. Huh. 
加快脚步！赶快，赶快！跑起来！快，快，快！First volley. Let's see, we have three kills right now. 35, 40. Ah, uh, stupid cavalry. We'll charge it. Some units to get out of this cavalry situation. Alright, and then charge at another target. When you charge, you gain a little boost of speed. So. Other target, other target. Oh no, 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 don't get bogged down, don't get bogged down. And we can help our guys take out some archers first. And then we'll go join the, the boys here. We might have to put everyone in shield wall. Come on. Alright, we eliminated all their cavalry. Our archers should start firing anytime now. Ooh, Li Jue is losing. It. See, vanguards lose about half their health and they stop wanting to fight anymore. It's just really need unbreakable on those guys. Oh, Liu Yao. It's okay. All three of these guys have resiliency. I'm not worried. Keep him occupied. Go, go health arrows. You have a better use. All right, three on one. We got this. I don't think I need to care about those guys. They're fine. Oh, Taishut's still losing health really fast. Luo Jun also losing health really fast. He has a silver weapon. He hits harder hard. He's almost dead. Come on, survive this. 3.1. We got him. Lo Jun survived it by a little bit. Charge. Our useless strategist. Alright, they're all routing. So is Li Jue. All right, not the cleanest win, but we'll take it. Uh, we'll chase them for a little bit, just so that we don't have to fight them again. So see you guys at the end. Alrighty. Not the prettiest fight, but we managed to scrap our way out of that one. And we're going to try to give our uh, Zhang Hong and Zhang Zhao a bow to see if we can make it work. Oh, Yuan Yao. Oh, what should we do with him? I think we're going with a pretty cruel run here. Let's execute. I mean, historically, we never got to fight him. Uh, by the time Yuan Shu lost and Yuan Yao was fleeing, he fled to Liu Xuan, who used to work for Yuan Shu uh, in um, you know, Lujiang. And then by the time we took it, he joined us and he uh, basically surrendered to Sun Ce and he got married. His uh, kids got married into the family. So. Uh, not a big deal that we don't have that play out. Now, any way we can give you more morale. More health? Yeah, maybe. More charge, mighty knockback. And you probably go for this and go for roar. Um, I think we do have a few generic bows that we can hand out. Right, we have a good one too, an impure bow, but with two composite bows, we can actually give... Both of them a composite bow and see if that works. 
they do still have some men left. They're running back to the fishing port. It's not a problem. We're going to go siege it. Uh, starve out. Move our reinforcement army over. They're probably going to need march to move into reinforcement range. Oh, they're getting blocked by this army right here. So we need to do this to draw out the defense. This fight will just delegate. So we can get rid of this army so they can move up a bit more. There we go. Alright, so we beat two armies, same army, twice. And we get this challenge done, the price of ambition, which actually give us plus 25 diplomatic relationship with Han Empire faction. So basically all the Han subculture factions. Uh, but I don't know why this says only if the character is Prime Minister Arrow faction leader. Does that mean each of them get a boost? And we get like two sets because we have Lady Wu? I don't know. Um, but we also get trade influence and replenishment. Those are concrete bonuses. And 2,000 gold. That's another very concrete bonus. Uh, Yufan uh, leveled up, level four now. Um, he probably can get rid of his position because he's actually he has a court position, I believe. We gave him the director of finance job, so uh, we can get rid of the orator. He'll still be very happy with us. And the bonus we want is we want to work towards fire arrows and night battle. We don't have any cunning horse. We should probably give him this bow. Eventually he can have the Celestial Fury set. Because he's one of our non-unique strategists here. Yeah, pick up some extra cunning wherever he can. This will make him a little bit more durable on the battlefield. Alright, so we want to move them. As close to the fishing port as possible. Do we still have enough movement? Yes, we do. And we can delegate this because they already depleted their men fighting us in that open field battle that we delegated earlier. Alright. And now we can officially say Jiangdong is ours. We have full control of Jiangdong. And... Um, did they level it up for us? Level 3. Not bad. We'll take that. I don't remember what level it was when we first came down to it. Um, but even if it was level 3, then... I suppose it was probably level 1. Because I remember we could upgrade it, but we didn't upgrade it. So we essentially got 2 free upgrade here. Uh, everyone go back to heal. And we'll, we'll reset this army as our main army with the uh, full retinue next turn. And everyone here is gone they serve their purpose and then the generals can also go back to full heal uh, they might not come out next turn just because um, we don't have enough seasonal deployment another reason why we need more conscription buildings but this way we can get ready to fight Yuan Shu. perfect all right uh, so the only challenge we have left is to kill Huang Zhu. Uh, this is uh, destroy his faction is easy. The achievements hard. The achievements we have to beat Huang Zhu in battle. So it highly depends on whether he summoned himself or not. Uh, what is this? Send Sun Quan any assignment. That's not happening. So we're just going to reset this when spring comes again. And that's about all our missions. There is going to be a situation here. We already know that. This one's mainly because of what? Population and buildings. Tax collector. That's fine too. So we need a quick fight. Well, de we're demolishing it, so actually that will bounce back. Xingdu is because of faction support, so it'll also bounce back. So Poyang's where we have to farm rebels for a little bit because we're keeping the tax collection uh, building there. Uh, aside from that, I think we're good. I think we just... Yeah, let's just check uh, turncoats and then we can move on. Wait, he's alive? We executed him. Didn't we? We can make it historical by employing him, but 
Somehow I feel like this system is wrong. He's just going to die the second we employ him, and it's going to cost us 2,000 here. We'll test it out. If he's not dead next turn, we'll recruit him. But I am pretty sure we executed him. It's one of these messages here. Because rivalry loss means we probably executed him. Anyhow. Uh, oh, shared expertise. I almost forgot that one again. Who wants a level up? Who's level four? Okay, one of these. Uh, you fun then because he uh, can boost to rank five or maybe he can't because he just ranked to four uh, but we want him to be five so that he can give us extra bonuses here uh, we would like him to be eight as well yeah let's let's give it to him for now it probably is not enough to ooh he was a 17 he's at that give him like 14 thousand experience that's wonderful uh he just gained this this turn he just leveled up and he leveled up twice this turn night battle awesome and what bonus does he provide for us now can we check is it i know he's on cooldown i want to see the bonus it's not showing us because he's on cooldown we'll see you next turn all right let's go so first he tries to ask us to join a uh, coalition now he's asking us to form a non-aggression pact this i'm okay with because i believe we're fighting some common enemies like tall tall and the high empire so why not make a friend from one warrior to another what items does he have nothing interesting but seems like his economy is doing pretty well he's so eager to sign a non-aggression pact with us uh how much cash does he have just wondering okay not that much cash so we'll take the per turn all right Zheng Jiang also fighting the high empire Cao Cao defending see Cao Cao is using up all his resources defending the high empire we got ourselves a weapon crafted from the weapon craftsman silver spear okay we'll take that Jia uh not interested John L. Gang Creative. Creative is going around. It's a bug in our faction. Uh, not complaining, though. That's a good news. Conscription first, simply because we really need deployments, seasonal deployment. Because we're facing off against him, I might actually pump the army out here. Because it's. I feel like it's closer to. No, it's not really closer. It's hard to tell. Well, it's better here just because it has more population, and more population means faster replenishment. Yeah. So zero bonus to replenishment, but here we have four extra percent. Small gains. We'll take it. Um, Sun Quan's back in court. We could pop him into assignment real quick instead of sending him out. Because he, he came back to heal. Well, this army needs to come out right away. They're the one I want to actually send out on the field he can take a scholar as well to boost his all right that's fine and how many more experience how much more experience do we need here nine thousand so i'm gonna wait a turn to recruit them uh retinue because i want to give him a level up so that he can be ranked six and we can get tiger guards and then this army can be perfect. Tiger Guards, Onyx Dragons. Uh, that'd be a beautiful army. And then one of them will do Tribuchets. He'll do Tribuchets. He'll do Crossboats. Two Crossboats, two Tribuchets. Eight Onyx Dragons. Six Tiger Guards. That should be a pretty great army without taking advantage of any of our great cavalry mechanics. But that's fine. All right, we can reach reinforcement range, and that's all we really need to do. And then we can rest. Oh, we're not at war with them. That's easy to fix. Do they have items? They don't. Okay. Right. Um, ooh, these two guys don't get along anymore. I don't know what trait they develop, but they no longer get along. We're not going to summon those two out for a second. 
Right. Take them down. Secure the homestead. Return to Sun Jian's first seat of power is like coming back to one's true home. And that's 10% discount for all settlement upgrades and 4k population growth once we get the trade port, which we fully intend to. I wonder if we want to keep these guys. Alright, now that we have access to them, I kind of want to compare their stats real quick. No, 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 no. Hold on. Right click, compare to these. These level 9, right? That's the comparison. So these have 58 morale. Oh, wow. The morale difference is shocking. The HP difference is shocking. They have more health. Oh, be yeah. How come? Oh, they have more health. What about the ranged stats? 48, 40. Well, uh, range attack rate's up, but that's mainly because of the levels. Armor piercing is up. Range. I think range is the big difference here. Yeah, we have to get rid of these, I think. The the range advantage is just too great. And over here we'll get two hand uh handmade guards. We'll recruit all of this once we get to here so that they can muster in peace. Frontline I think we'll still use mercenary uh, infantry here these are great uh, being shielded axe super high range block chance super good against enemy shield units and just just all around pretty great I don't I don't see a reason to go with anything else and we don't need any tiger guards here because we will have handmade guards from the cavalry to support in terms of defending uh, defensive stat for the general uh, so we're good here So they're all set up. We have assignments. We could really pump Sun Quan here for a turn just to finish that quest before spring. And then officially put Xiao Tao here to boost commerce once we retake that. So convert this back to the inn. This can be brought down. We really want to upgrade this soon, but everything will take time. Alright, let's get all the buildings out of the way. So this is officially a small city now. So private workshop, and then we want to upgrade that. Put it in here. Jian'an. This just be food. Conscription building, and then we'll pop a state workshop once we get it to city. Jian'ye is pure income, so we're not going to fight corruption here. We're going to just use our administrator for the 30% corruption and use neighboring commanderies to bring uh, the other corruptions down. This need more building slots. Poyang, what is Poyang building? Ah, uh, he's upgrading the commander. Okay, that's fine. Uh, all the buildings are done. We still have some army things to do. But first, quick check with the situation. With yep, Yuanyao is dead. So good thing we didn't actually pay for him. I'm confused why Jiaxu is not moving to. Uh, Yuan Shu's faction, given that he is a duchy, first duchy, I believe. Uh, but maybe that's only when the player becomes a duchy and then he joins the player. Uh, anyways, that's another reason why we don't need to recruit him. Now, 12k. We're waiting to recruit his tiger guard, so we, we can't wait a turn. How many more deployment slots? We have two. Okay, if we have two, we can prep an army here because there's going to be a rebellion here very soon. We're going to pick Zhang Liao, who has, if I'm correct, need to double check, who has patience. Yes, okay, good. Tai Shi Tzu will be in the army fighting. Oh, well, that's it. Chen Gong probably has patience as well, but these two don't get along. Okay, we'll, we'll summon Chen Gong, it doesn't matter if they don't get along. And then Tai Shi Tzu, Lu Meng as well. Lu Meng is doing what? Okay. We'll pop him out a bit later. 
we'll just make John L stand here, and then we'll pop two generals in when the rebellion happens. Just do a quick attack, and then we can summon them back or something. All right, we're good. Let's continue here. Oh, Zhuo Rong has declared war on us. Good. So that's good. We, uh, re you know, recruited our army here in Jianye because we can start with him. Walk up Guangling. Mm, although I'm kind of worried he might launch attack against us. He should be pretty passive. Well, I like his cruel tyrant personality because he is very cruel. I don't, I don't know about Tyron. He's just a very greedy and very cruel person. They're taking turns. So Li Bu asked us once. Now Zan Ba is asking us. Who knows? Maybe next time Zhang Yan will give us invitation. Reject. Ooh, alliance war. Fancy that. Liu Bei, Kong Rong, Zheng Jiang is in alliance. What? Okay. So Shu Wu, they're attacking Sun. Okay, so we should be friendly with everyone because of the, com the like common enemy situation. La Ba festival in the winter that makes perfect sense. Okay, you eat La Ba Zhou, which is a kanji with uh, various different uh, beans and dried fruits added in. Uh, we were gonna scout ahead, start another war, fighting on all fronts. All right, defenseless. So we don't even need to actually. Recruit men. We can just go to war. We're not friends. All right, they're about angry. Okay. We don't make too many enemies. Oh, Liu Bao didn't didn't protect him. Oh no, he did. Okay. Um. We probably have to march. So he's going to have to siege. Oh, he can win. Good for you. I mean, it's a level one trade port. It's not, nothing broken. It's just a level one versus a level five general. All right. We co captured everything. Nice. Got a red horse. 20,000 gold in treasury. Attending secretary title unlocked. Hua Tingying. Not necessarily historical, but I'm kind of curious. Oh. She's a bandit. Not a spy. Level 1 with a bunch of items. So she can be one of our two sentinel girls who can reach rank 5 and poison volley. So all great news. Rank 6 will get flexibility for healing. Okay, that's fine. Not a bad move. John L's also rank 6. Finally can get his resolve with the righteous. So underdog increase stats. We have enough sheriff expertise to boost Luo Jun hopefully into rank 6 as well. So we can get those tiger guards on him. Let's see if it did the trick. Yep. Um, what do we want him to pick up? Mobility? Battle running speed for retinue? Extra morale when commanding? Yeah, he's actually commanding and we can get reach on him after that. So that's perfect. And do we have... we can give him this as well. Right, we've been mistreating him a little. One day we'll set up a crossbow army. Once we become emperor, probably. And then we'll use the imperial crossbow. But this army is good for melee uh, range base damage. So Onyx Dragon is the way to go. Alright, we have Heavy Spear Guard versus Tiger Guard. Okay. Probably four of these and two of these. It's my guess. Because these have slightly higher range block chance. Well, actually, the evasions. Oh, wow. Maybe we don't need that 5%. That extra invasion here makes them look much better. It's 723 base damage versus uh, armor piercing 7. So they have, the same, they have the same spear, right? That's why the attack's the same. A little lower charge, but it's fine. I never charge our spearmen. 
Also higher morale, higher evasion is really the big difference here. All right, so I guess we go six of these. They're more expensive. All right, th this is gonna be our expen most expensive army. We actually might switch the titles around to give this army the retinue decrease. Oh, no, 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 not all of them. He will be Tribuchet. He will be Crossbow. Ooh, yeah, that's ex one expensive army here. Um, who has the discount recruitment cost? We could have used both, but we'll switch him. We'll give him a more offensive one. Because the army is not going to be that expensive here. We must have something cool for him. General who pacifies the south. We could give him a little extra attack. It doesn't hurt. Melee damage. One oil per battle. Who smashes the ca uh, general of the standard. Ooh, range damage. Charge bonus to own retinue. That's kind of useless. Firing rate for own retinue. Morale. Charge reflect. Let's do this. That way the mercenary infantry will not only have charge negate once we get uh, bravery here. They will also always have charge reflect. Which makes them pretty great front line because he's going to be the only front line in the army. So let's give him this. General of the guards. Which is actually a super high level rank uh, historically. It's one of the top like tier two ranks. Um, we're gonna give him the retinue reduction next turn, right? Because there's a cooldown, and then the whole army's retinue reduction would be five percent. So that's super worth. They can pick up some of these uh, range damage and range attack rate ones, right? Range firing rate plus fifty percent line of sight plus ten cunning. So we'll give him this. And then he, there's one more for range damage. Somewhere down here. I saw it earlier. No, not the poison arrows. I'm not interested in poison arrows for this army. This one. And we also get one extra tower. And also he gets extra 10 cunning. There we go. This is our fanciest army yet. Uh, hope for great things here as they go north. Um... Sun Quan is on assignment. He activated that mission, so his job is done. We can pull him out. It was a very temporary assignment, and he can rejoin uh, Zhou Tai in the army together. We have to fight them here, and then we're going to reinvade into uh, Jiangling, kind of recapture where our father's starting position is. Um, we'll go back in the city and take the road like this. We're gonna recruit an army here later. All right, we also need we need to, we, our money situation need a breather. All right, what can we build? Definitely want that upgraded. All right, we're a little tight on cash, uh, that's for sure. So stay efficient here. Private workshop. Why is it plus three? Ah, uh, La Ba event. Okay, so we're not going to get a rebellion here anytime soon. John L can just stand here. All right, just give us some food. This will increase our seasonal deployment by one. Hmm. We want the global commerce multiplier. Mm, out of cash. Officially out of cash. Okay, that's fair. We can't afford anyone, but I just want to take a peek. Alright, nothing going on. Um, do we want to summon some generals while we have deployment here? All right. Tai Shu Tzu is definitely going with them. And I think he's bringing... Mm. 
I mean, he gets along with almost everyone, including Huang Gai. Uh, we can turn off the comparison thing. Lu Su. Yeah, we'll do that. Uh, how do we turn off the comparison one? There we go. Okay, so this is going to be our northern invasion force. Uh, this one's waiting for Sun Quan to join in here. And then we'll head over. So let's continue. Wait, aren't we at war with you? Are we not? At, we are at war with him. And he, yet he, he will give us a peace deal if we become his vassal. No deal. All right, spring again. Okay, invoke some faction mission, get a new reform. So now we're we have freedom on the reform tree because we got our onyx dragon. That was kind of our goal. Uh, level four in sounds pretty good. Going down this route to pick up level four state workshop and private. It's actually this is actually pretty key because we need this building, the level four state workshop that gives corruption reduction uh, to adjacent commanderies. Uh, we also need this one for the income focus version. So I think we might just go up this way. Uh, mines can wait. We're not focusing on tax collection. Uh, we're past that point for our economy. We're doing pretty healthy. I, yeah, I think we go this way first and eventually we're going to go up this way for the copper mine corruption reduction and then pick up the level five state workshop. Uh, not so keen on this dragon unit. Pro dragons one though, not so strong ones. Let's just say that kindly. Hmm. Plus ten relationship with all factions and plus ten satisfaction with all characters. This is underrated. I mean, usually you don't pick this one up. We kind of did just because early on the salary was two hundred default, and then they patched it. We'll take that one. My guess is they don't have much of a force here. I could be wrong. We can just scout with Joe Tai because he's amazing. All right, his force is north of the river. It's a level three, so it's respectable. We're not going to just be able to delegate a win here. We'll let our brother start getting used to his abrasive advisor. Train him while he's young. All right. We won't put an army here until we need to, just to keep costs low. We still want to make money per turn to build up. Most of our money is going into building uh, right now. They're going to need one more turn of replenishment, and this army is good to go. I feel really good about this army. Uh, we got excellent generals, excellent items. Yeah, just solid all around. Uh, if we're rich enough, we can always pop in a few mercenary uh, cavalry whenever we are in front of a tough battle and then we can get rid of them. Right, now we can actually put in a real assignment for Xiao Chao. It's going to be Changsha. Uh, where is Changsha? Right here. Xiao Chao pick up a few levels here. Oh, we didn't actually look at our assassin girl. Uh, so Poison Volley, she needs a few levels to get there, but she's a kind assassin. A coordinated assassin and a charitable assassin. Uh, basically, she gets extra armor piercing damage. This is one of the new backgrounds for bandit characters. She brings us a lot of good stuff. Um, we should swap this with her. Hold on. We have a lot of good weapons. This is what we got for executing Liu Yao. Uh, Liu, uh, Liu, uh, Yuan, Yuan Yao. Right, Yuan Yao. Zhang Nao is not at war. He has the gold set. And she will give him this for some extra health. We're just going to disarm her for now. She's probably going to, you know, sit on the bench for a while, pick up some experience before coming out on the battlefield. We don't necessarily need her right now. All right. It's fine. Ah, poor John out. We thought we were going to farm rebels with him, but then we had the Laba event. Oh, we got so many positive boosts because of all the invoke factions we did. Speaking of that, let's do it. Upgrade a state workshop. Easy. Uh, upgrade a settlement. Easy. 
embed a spy in Liu Bao's faction. Interesting, interesting mission. Raise a force. Okay, let's let's pop the raise a force right away. Right. You can go chill. Um, we have enough for another blah blah. Every two turns, it's insane. Um, let's see what else can we do. We need to embed a spy inside Liu Bell's faction. He doesn't have any available anymore. We can keep an eye out. I don't want to send a spy. It's too slow. After turncoat patch, I just basically got too impatient for traditional spying. All right, so the rest are just building stuff. All right, let's get that built. I don't think we're going to keep this. We're over 1 million, which I'm happy. Like, our administrator is plus 40k, right? And faction, oh my god. Our faction bonus is plus 52k. What do we have? We have some really ridiculous, okay, plus 5k here. So that's every county. So there's four counties. Uh, there's one settlement and three counties. So four times five is 20. What else do we have? Ah, oh, we have from our legacy of Wu. Chang, uh, homestead, homestead, where is it? Plus four. That's every county too, I bet. So that's 16, 20, 36. And then we have something else giving us something extra here. Well, anyhow, we don't need this for population growth. We're growing every turn without this. Let's get rid of it. And we can put a forge, which will boost um, not only uh, the, the industry income, but also give us uh, items. Mm, copper mine can wait. All these can wait, actually. I want more building slots. That's our goal, I bet. Yep. Um, we could look towards, you know, some sort of diplomatic option to get more money. We're probably not going to war with Zhu Fu anytime soon. Ah, right. Lady Wu's still single. Well, our mom is going to stay single. She's going to live out her days very happily. Zhang Yan. Some, okay. We're, we're not poor enough to ask for money. We're good. Yeah, we just can't build anything. We need a state workshop in these places. Yeah, I'm kind of worried what happens when we get this army built. Oh, we could build a conscription building here. 500. Right. Just enough. 33 gold. Yeah, I don't know how we're going to afford another army here. Uh, shared expertise. All right, so this is minus 2% corruption plus 10% all sources. We want to give him a level up for more spies. I don't know. I don't really care about more spies. Which one's really good for going for gunning for level eight? This one. We need more administrators. But Handang shouldn't be in this position. That's that's the problem. All right, it'd be ideal. Oh actually he's only rank three. Let's give him I forgot about him. There we go. Zhang Zhao, uh, we'll pick up patience, I think, just so that we can capture more generals on our way north. All right, let's continue. Oh, they will become our vassal, and they will pay us if we sign a peace deal with them. Did they see our army, Tiger Guards and Onyx Dragon? They freak out. He's a he's a duke. You're scared. I mean, I mean, we murdered his son, and he's not very angry with us. He, he's angry with us, but he's willing to pay so much. I mean, logically, we accept, take the toolmaker, go to war with them first, and we try to vassalize him. Hmm. Give us a foothill.
Give us our seal back. That's what we really want. Take a fish and take a eavesdropper. He's pretty rich. This is actually not a great armor. Yeah, and this is not a good sword. Um, we'll ask for some money back. We'll take a territory. I wasn't planning for this. I don't want him to be my vassal. That's just, just way too messy. He offered it, but doesn't mean we have to accept his his conditions. We just want land, and then after, you know, 10 turns, we can go to war with him again. Liu Bell is unhappy. That's fine. We're attacking Liu Bell. Shi Xi is unhappy because we're no longer common enemies. That's okay. These are all factions we're going to fight later. All right. That's an interesting turn of events there. Was not expecting them to offer us such a generous peace deal. Um... State workshop upgraded. Settlement upgraded. Yeah, we're doing great. Uh, the faction missions are coming in really nicely uh, to the point where I almost don't want to become king. And uh, we're not going to be king anytime soon. Prestige gain. I mean, this is the normal prestige gain rate. Uh, we were so used to Lupul's rate, which they halved because it was just way too ridiculous. Um, I guess this army did its job. Like, it showed up. They got scared. Uh, it's a level 3 tool maker. That's fine. It's nice. 300 income per turn. Uh, we have a level up on Zhang Zhou. Okay. So our experience boost gave him enough to gain a level himself as well. Cool. Uh, he doesn't need rich. Gorilla deployment would be pointless if they can't gorilla deploy alongside him. So we might actually just get this. Just to lock enemy abilities and then go for more range damage. All right, we're still going to go to war. We have a target. Um, so what they can do is actually pop into the river, go siege, and they can go reinforce because they can move farther because they have no retinue on them. These guys have siege weapons on them. Hold out, hold out, wait, wait. Yeah, that piece doesn't affect us. We still can, you know, do our northern... What's the range on this thing? Hold on. What's the, what's the reinforcement circle here? Can we get on land? Oh my god. Don't tell me we can't get on. There we go. Medium casualties? Who are they kidding? Do they not see what we brought? Let's flex. And also let's test out if uh, the um, two Johns would work or not. So there's no way this is medium casualty. Let's fight. All right. The AI disrespect is just way too much. How do we have medium casualty here in this delegate fight? Let's watch our reinforcements show up. Tiger guards. Onyx dragons. Okay, these guys don't look so fancy actually. Siege weapons. Against this? Medium casualties? They're charging out? Either Zhou Rong's men are just super cocky or... Like, they clearly don't know what they're facing. Line up! Oh, 
Is it active? I don't know. It's. I don't think it's actually active. Missile attack. Can target if missile attack is possible. Enable a friendly unit in range with this ability. So friendly unit in range with this ability is him. Uh, the beta patch said they fixed this. I don't know what happened. Oh, the suicidal units are here. Alright, we're going to move him up. I mean, I understand we'll take some casualty. Actually, we might not even take any casualties. We'll have how much range block chance? 70? That's high enough. If we're able to charge into all the range units, we actually don't take any casualty. Alright, so if we fire with a bow, do we activate that ability? They're both firing. I don't know. It's not picking up. But 66... Maybe they, it is picking up. I'm not sure. Alright. Come on. Hit all the range units. We gotta disprove this uh, medium casualty nonsense. Yeah, we can't get this ability to trigger. Or else it should be down here. I mean, we, we outrange their range units by 70 because these are what archer militias oh these are captains so these have 200 range but we have 250 range yeah come 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 close you know try to shoot us with your archers we lost seven tiger this guy got shot a little bit 70 percent range block chance not good enough Look at our guys. Oh, we're getting shot at. No one's dying yet. And the enemy is just getting clobbered. Wow, that last soul. Come closer. They think they can beat us. Alright, let's go finish them off. I, we have to probably charge that guy. They're not moving up anymore. They're getting smart. Forgot to change those. They get out of the way. Let him volley into that. Oh, they actually can hit this. Should be shade range OP. All right, we win. We lost like what, ten men? Seven at the end. Alrighty. We showed them. There's one thing I would like to check. Um, well, we don't need the migration stuff. No need. Whether their base damage is 66. It's not, right? It's 48. So they are getting a boost in battle. Because it was 66 when we saw it. So perhaps I think it's actually triggering without us noticing. Right, we don't have any ability, any skills that boost range damage. We haven't picked this one up yet. And I don't have any items or any traits that does that. So the only thing that could do it is this. 20% range base damage. So that's plus 9. 9.6. It doesn't explain all the difference. 
66 is what? 18 more. Unless they stack. Where he boosts 9, he boosts 9. Because that would explain 66. So maybe it's just triggering and it's visually not there. But I think it's working. Because we saw the 66 damage on these guys. And their base damage outside of battle is 48. Anyhow. Uh, well, actually, that's not going to get saved because we're going to end our episode here. So we're not going to do anything here. Um, we have landed in the north. Our goal is... hes I think he's someone's vassal. No, he's not. That's good. Our uncle... I mean, the game has one issue. The game doesn't recognize him as our uncle. You can't even marry... Uh, oh, actually, you can't marry the mom anymore. They fixed that? I'm not sure if they fixed that. But technically, like... It used to be you can even marry Wu Jing to Lady Wu, even though they're brother and sisters. Uh, oh, he is a vassal to Lu Bu. Hmm, that might be a little rough because I want to, I don't know, save him in a sense, but we'll see what happens. Uh, maybe we will destroy him. Uh, that's also a possibility. Maybe he declares war on us. Uh, we can't promise anything, but we're going to wipe out the farmland. Then we're going to have this road that we can take. Uh, and then we can come down here first and take Lu Jiang from the High Empire. Very soft targets. Grab both of these. And if Yuan Shu is going to stay at war with us, that's fine. We'll just control, you know, the coastline of the the North Bank and the South Bank of the Yangtze River. And then we can flood over here and help out our other group by taking down the rest of the Jin Province and go to war with Cao Cao because you know he's the owner of the High Empire. And uh, that's it. We can ignore the High Empire right here for now. They can be a nice buffer. We're going to let Shu Wu colonize some of these land so we don't have to pay for that and we're going to make a cut into the central area here so hope you guys enjoyed this episode and see you all next time bye